Now, interference in favor of one party or another is one of the biggest concerns Nigerians have whenever an election rolls around. That and the fear of insecurity and the danger of it leading to disruption and harm. Well, they have valid reasons to be worried. For years now, every election in this country has been characterized by violence and allegations of election manipulation. In spite of assurances from the Electoral Commission, INEC, ahead of every election of the measures it's taken to limit human interference and ensure the ballot is not rigged and is seen to be free and fair. Most recently, during the presidential election, they asked Nigerians to put their confidence in the bimodal voter accreditation system, or BEAVERS, and an electronic system, IREV, to transmit the results. Yet, for many, the use of technology failed to deliver credibility. So, will it be any different this time? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now on the line from Yene Goa by the INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner in Bielsa State, Obo Efanga. Thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us. Um, can we expect professionalism, impartiality and integrity from INEC in these elections? Yes, INEC has always stood for professionalism, impartiality and uh, integrity in his conduct of election and we are going to do that this time around. Uh, you talked about the beavers, we are going to use the beavers. You talked about the IREF, we are going to use the IREF. I'm sure you understand that after what happened in the last major election cycle in February, a lot of people are skeptical and need to be reassured. Yes, uh, I think that we need to, at some point, we need to really have a proper discussion on this. I think that um, we need to understand that IREV was introduced by INEC in 2020. And INEC has used the IREV in all the elections it has conducted from 2020 to date. It used it in the general election, and it worked. At some point, there was difficulty with the, update, uh, with the upload to the IREF, and that was corrected after a few hours. And elections that happened two weeks or three weeks after then the, House, the governorship and the House of Assembly elections, it worked. So the point needs to be stressed that this has worked more often than it never worked. And the time it did not work, it was just for a few hours, and eventually those uh, results were uploaded, and those results are still there on the IREF. For every result that was uploaded to the IREF since I next started using the IREF in 2020, those results are still there on the IREF for people who want to see, to see, uh, see them. Unfortunately, with some of the discussions, when I have discussions with people, I find out that people talk about the IREF, people who have never even bothered to go to the IREF to understand how it works. And the point also needs to be stressed that the IREV is a portal where polling unit results, photographs of the polling unit results are posted there, are uploaded there, so people can see it. It is not a collation uh, a portal. It is not a, a collation device. Okay, well, thank you for that explanation. I suspect it won't assuage the concerns and fears of a lot of people because of the assurances that were given to them of the, the real time uh, impact of IREV and how it was going to make a difference. Nevertheless, let's move on from that. You've assured us that it's all going to work tomorrow, so we'll see how it goes. Looking at Bielsa State in particular, where you are, I mean, there'd been the impression that the state was calm, and certainly more so than Emo and Kogi states. But in the last 24 hours or so, there have been reports of explosions and attacks on some political parties and on their premises. I mean, it sounds like the temperature of violence is going up. I mean, what is your sense of the level of disturbance there, and, and are you concerned about that? Well, it's unfortunate. What it means is that uh, politicians uh, are getting desperate uh, as we go closer to the election, and uh, that is uh, what is leading to uh, the, uh, the violence that we are 
uh, hearing. But I'm sure that uh, the security agencies, it is their responsibility to prevent this uh, or to when this happens to react to it. And I'm sure that uh, they know what to do. What we know uh, to do and we have to do as INEC is to uh, bring out materials and personnel to uh, conduct the election and ensure that everybody has a fair chance of uh, participating in the election as a voter or as a contestant. And that at the end of the day, the winner will emerge based on the votes of the people. And that is what we are focused on doing. And are you worried about the safety of your staff in these elections? Or are you reassured by the promises from the security services that they'll give you the protection you need? Well, like I said, it is the duty of the security agencies to provide the, uh, the, the security cover for us. And um, we hope and believe that uh, they are able to do that. And um, so we will focus on doing what we have to do. Um, well, um, now that the, 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 the tempo of uh, violence or insecurity is increasing, uh, we'll naturally be worried about that, but we will still rely on the security agencies to do their part. And obviously you mentioned um, the, your concern over the rising temperature of insecurity, but what are the challenges that you think might throw a spanner into the works on Saturday? Well, we look at... Um, You've mentioned, you've mentioned uh, insecurity. That, 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 that would be a major issue if that is not managed. And uh, the other challenges we have uh, that are within our purview to handle, we've tried as much as possible to do that, which is uh, the issue of um, getting the um, materials and the personnel to the uh, polling units on, on time. And we've done a lot to ensure that that happens. Uh, we've moved all the materials to the local government areas as of yesterday, and today uh, we are moving. We have moved, and we are still moving materials to the registration area centres where our personnel will camp overnight, so that uh, tomorrow morning they can easily uh, get to the polling units, which is uh, at a closer distance to them at the registration area centres. So we are working on that. Um, so uh, if we get that right, then. Uh, uh, we, the election will, will come out well. Right. Uh, so there's a question mark there, is there? You said if we get that right. Yeah, of, of course we, we, are, we are working towards getting that right. And I, like I said, as of yesterday, if all the materials as of yesterday had gone to the local government areas and today the materials have gone, uh, to the registration area centers. So in the morning, it's just for them to move from the registration area centers to um, the polling units, and uh, that's what we are working on. And uh, by that, then we will have the, the election, the polls open on time, and then everybody will be given an opportunity to come and uh, vote. And um, the INEC condition that it will cancel elections where there's violence has elicited a lot of concerns and fears that opposing parties uh, might unleash violence in areas where they are not doing well, so those elections might be cancelled. I mean, what's your reaction to that? Do you see that as a genuine concern? Well, the important thing is that we want to conduct election <clears throat> and we want the people to vote and we want to count the votes and we want to declare the results on the basis of how people have voted. And to be able to do that, we will rely on uh, security, the security to do the, uh, the right thing. We also re uh, require that those who participate in the election as candidates, as political parties, as uh, uh, stakeholders, as uh, voters, conduct themselves well. So if uh, election is marred in such a way that we cannot have a result in that place, then unfortunately we can't have a result in that place. And uh, the result can add to uh, uh, the rest of the results. So we hope that uh, everybody does the right thing and uh, the security also is able to contain any issue so that all votes would, uh, would count. And you talked uh, earlier, Mr. Efanga, of the challenges, the potential challenges that you foresee, but also you talked about the fact that you'd been using technology 
um, mostly successfully since 2020. I mean, I, I wonder if INEC has reviewed the election processes that have taken place in the past, for instance, in February and March this year, and made improvements. And did that review involve interested parties giving evidence to INEC as well as voters who recently voted? I'm trying to understand the scope if there was such a review, because that's the expectation that there would be a well, review. Yes, that we've had uh, several reviews uh, uh, of the of the last election. Uh, we started at the state level and then uh, up to the national uh, level. And some of the uh, uh, things that came up there, we also tried to address it uh, going into the next election. But you also know that um, it's not too long ago that happened and we have these other elections. I'm sure that by the next uh, cycle of general elections, a lot of those issues would have been uh, properly identified and uh, solutions uh, 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 for them uh, uh, rolled out and implemented. But um, as much as possible, we can learn from some of the uh, challenges that we had, um, which I would mentioned one or two of them, uh, including the issues of logistics. But if, if you also recall that in the last general elections, when we had the presidential and the national assembly elections, uh, we had a lot of uh, logistics challenges. But by the time we had the second round of election, which is the governorship and the House of Assembly elections, uh, that was uh, uh, not as pronounced as before because we were able to address what that was. And going into election, this next uh, election, which is the one after the last general elections, we hope to improve uh, on what we've done. And that's why I said that um, as of yesterday, which was Thursday, we had already moved the materials uh, f uh, to the local government areas. And today, Friday, we moved them to the registration area center so that we are able to open the pools early enough uh, on, on, on election day. That's tomorrow. And... Um how stressful is all this for you on a personal level? Because, I mean, apart from the obvious logistical and organisational challenges, I mean, I wonder if you're under any particular pressure to lean one way or another in this election. Well, I have no such pressure about leaning one way or another if you're referring to being neutral then I stay neutral. I don't, um, I don't even know, um, have interest in who becomes uh, elected. What I'm interested in and what I is interested in is getting the process right. Uh, but if you're talking about uh, a stress uh, that come with this job, truly it is um, uh, such a huge one uh, because the, there are a lot of factors, uh, a lot of things that you have to worry about. You have to worry about the materials, you have to worry about the personnel, you have to worry about so many things. You have to worry about the security of the personnel, you have to worry about security of everybody that participates in the election. And uh, so, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a huge project, really, conducting election uh, in a place, in any place, and more so in a place like Nigeria, with all its diversities and the passion people bring uh, into the electoral process and people who think that um, they must always win uh, when they participate in the election. So um, uh, it's, it's quite a huge task that uh, people who are involved in election uh, face. And um, unfortunately, uh, when the elections are over, everybody wants to blame INEC for anything that goes wrong, even if it's something that was not within uh, um, the control of INEC. But, well, uh, like I keep telling people, this is uh, what uh, we signed up for and uh, we, we take it in our strides. Well, I hope you can prove all the people wrong uh, tomorrow and Saturday and um, conduct these elections um, in a way that would raise the public profile of, of INEC. I have to say that you always look very calm and uh, not a hair out of place. So that, that's a good image to present because at least it reassures the public. I mean, if you're, if you're sort of, um, if you look upset, then you wonder what the rest of the people are going to do. But I want to thank you very much indeed for your time and, and to leave you to get on with the very important job you've got to do. Obo Efanga is the INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner in Bielsa State, and he was talking to me there from Yenagoa.